Hello, I'm Dimitri, head of this laboratory, and today we will show you how we make nanomaterials by using chemical vapor deposition. Let's see what we have here. Let me introduce my colleague, Konstantin, who will show you uh, all details of this procedure later. Uh, we have a uh, main component of this system is an uh, electrical furnace, which can be heated up to 1700 centigrade. In addition to the furnace, we have uh, pipelines for different gases depending on the chemistry of material we are going to prepare. And uh, the last but not least, a look up here, we have a gas sensing system. In case of any leakage of these dangerous gases, the system will be automatically shut down. And yesterday we made a try uh, to make boronitride nanomaterials here. You can see different components of this, precursor, silicon wafers, and after the synthesis, the wafer changed the color. It means we are successful in making nanomaterial made of boron nitride. And Konstantin will uh, guide you for the rest of the procedures. Hello everyone. Our first step is preparation of powder mixture. For this synthesis, we will use 0.5 grams of magnesium oxide, 9 grams of boron, and 2 grams of boric acid. First of all, we need to measure the weight of powders. For this, we need to weigh this glass first. Re-zero its weight, and add our powders to the glass. Then we transfer it here. Now when we have our powders ready, we can mix them a bit and then transfer to the ceramic bowl. I do carefully and try to distribute powder uniformly in the bowl. Now when it's ready, we can put our substrate, silicon wafer, in another bowl. And this is the actual place where our nanostructure will be grown. So now when our stuff is ready, we can transfer it to the furnace. This board needs to be put in the zone with the highest temperature. For this we use this stick with a centimeters mark and put it inside on the length of 75 centimeters. You need to do it carefully to be sure that the board not fall down. And now when this part is ready, we need we can transfer our powder mixture inside. And this powder mixture needs to be uh, put it on zone with lower temperature. So we put it inside only for 40 centimeters. Now our furnace is ready to be sealed. First of all, we use this thermal radiation shield. It's a very important part because it prevents our end seals from overheating. We put it inside and then use this end seals and close this end. Now we close second end of the furnace and put again these thermal radiation shields. Very important part to prevent our end seal from overheating. And everything is ready for closing. Just to be, just check that our O-ring is clean and sitting well, and then we can close it. Now, once the furnace is closed, we can turn on the vacuum pump. Here it is. It's important to do it slowly to prevent spilling of open. You can see over here on this matter that pressure is going down, and once it's ready, we can start heating. Now, when the furnace is heating, we can turn on our gas lines. Now, when we have vacuum in our furnace, we can turn on argon flow and fill the furnace with argon. We are checking the flow using this meter and gradually increase the flow speed. 
you can see it slowly goes up and once it will be one atmosphere we can open this valve and flow through the furnace will go on when we're going close to the zero it's better to reduce flow a bit to be more careful now we have atmospheric pressure inside our furnace and we can open this valve and you can see bubbling through this oil it means we have actual flow through our furnace now we can open ammonia line I said ammonia flow here and now we have both gases going through our furnace so once the temperature will reach 1300 degree reaction will start when the temperature inside the furnace at the low T zone reaches 700 degrees the powder mixture starts to produce a reactive vapor this vapor travels through the furnace to the high T zone where the temperature is 1300 degrees here, the vapor reacts with the ammonia gas by breaking the nitrogen-hydrogen bonds in ammonia and boron-oxygen bonds in boric acid. Boron atoms and nitrogen atoms then recombine to produce a boron nitrate nanostructure, which is deposited on the silicon substrate as you can see in these examples. Now, when our powders was heated up to 1300 degrees and stayed at this temperature about one hour and after this it was cooled down, the whole procedure took about 10 hours, we can turn off the furnace and open it. First, I open this end, unscrew this part, take and seal out. and take this radiation shield from the furnace. Now we can open the second part. Again unscrew. Taking off and seal. And second radiation shield. Now we can take our samples from the furnace. We need to do it carefully because it's very easy to spill the powder. First bolt we just do like this. And second one we push through the furnace to the other side. Now we can take sample from the furnace. So now our sample is ready and we can see the results. So first of all, powder mixture it changed its color a lot from the black one to the gray and white one and its color changed different bits because this board was a temperature gradient zone. This end temperature was 800 degree and here we had 1200 degree. And it's clear that at 1200 degree the reaction is more intense. And if we look on our silicon substrate you can see that its color changed a lot compared to the initial silicon vapor and it means that we have nanostructured coating uh, on its surface. So now our experiment is finished and I hope it was interesting and I understand a lot about basics of CV synthesis.